Welcome back to Kinetics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're actually going to go over something called a Jablonski diagram. And this is really about quantum kinetics. So while we're not actually looking at quantum mechanics yet in really a lot of detail, there are some quantum events that you've probably seen in courses such as analytical chemistry, maybe instrumental chemistry, and we're going to look at the kinetics of those and how we deal with those, and that's ultimately going to lead to the stern volmer plot, which we'll do in a separate video. So I don't want to go into a whole lot of detail about these specific events, but I'll at least do a little bit. So when we talk about quantum kinetics, normally we're interested in fluorescence. So first of all, what is fluorescence? Fluorescence is an electronic relaxation in which a fraction of light absorbed is emitted at a higher wavelength or lower frequency. Okay, what the heck does that mean? Well, first of all, let's look at this diagram. This is actually a Jablonski diagram. It shows you the various electronic transitions, and we're going to go over several of them. The first one in blue, this is the one that's most common that you've probably even heard of in biology courses. So you, have, you start off with a molecule whose electron is in the ground state. All right. So what's going to happen is the molecule will absorb light of some energy or wavelength, whatever, and the electron will go up into a higher energy state. All right. Now you'll notice that this energy state over here is the S2. That's not really super important right now, but just so you know, the S stands for singlet, and there's two, ma two, mainly two different singlet states we can have. This is the second singlet state, which is higher in energy. We also can absorb and go up into a first singlet state, S1. Okay, So absorption can happen to either of those. Now, if we're in the S1 state, so we absorb light, we go up in energy, we can have some vibrational relaxation. And when we get down to this lowest energy of the singlet 1 state, then we can actually fluoresce. And this fluorescence is really just the emission of a photon photons of light. And if they're in the visible region of the spectrum, you can actually see the fluorescence. A great example of this that is used commonly in biochemistry and molecular biology is green fluorescent protein, which actually comes from marine creatures such as jellyfish. What happens is whenever you shine light on these jellyfish, they actually emit green light, and that green light is actually the result of fluorescence. So that's actually what's happening here. They're absorbing light. There might be some vibrational relaxation back down to this lowest bold S1 state, but then the light is emitted and you perceive green. Okay, And normally we're interested in fluorescence. If you go up into the S2 state, you can't actually fluoresce directly from there. Instead, the, the energy has to go to the S1 state first. And so a conversion of an electronic state from S2 to S1 is called internal conversion. And then you can get the vibrational relaxation and subsequent fluorescence. There's another state that we can talk about, which is phosphorescence, not as common or, and not usually as useful. But if you're in the S1 state, you can see here we can actually go into a triplet state, T1. So from S1 to T1, that's actually a process called intersystem crossing. And once we're in that triplet excited state, we can actually go down using vibrational relaxation to this bold lowest T1 state. And then phosphorescence, which is also a type of emission, can occur. We can talk about quantum yield of phosphorescence, but normally we're just talking about fluorescence, and that's mainly the one we're concerned with. Another example of this is if you're doing gel electrophoresis, typically the illuminator for that is ethidium bromide. You're actually looking at the fluorescence of ethidium bromide. So fluorescence is extremely useful in a lot of different uh, areas and disciplines, particularly biology. Now, what we can talk about with all of these processes is the quantum yield of a particular process. A lot of times the quantum yield, which is denoted by the Greek letter phi, um, the quantum yield is talked about with respect to fluorescence, so this phi sub f. So what we do is we say that the, the quantum yield of that fluorescence is equal to the rate constant of the fluorescence divided by the sum of the rate constants for every single process. Okay, so for example, Kf is fluorescence. Um, Ec is external conversion. Ic is internal conversion. And there's a bunch of others here. Okay, But the point is, you just add up all the rate constants for 
each process that can happen, including the one that you're talking about, and then you divide the rate constant for that process by that sum. Okay. So if I wanted to talk about the rate constant with respect to internal conversion, I would just re replace this KF with KIC. Okay, that's the only difference. But it's just normally we talk about the rate constant for fluorescence and therefore the quantum yield of fluorescence. Some other properties that are important to be able to calculate or at least understand is first of all what's called the radiated lifetime. The radiated lifetime is denoted by tau sub naught and it's equal to one divided by the rate constant for fluorescence. Okay, And so it's pretty much just the reciprocal of that rate constant. That's your radiated lifetime. All right. Then we have the decay time denoted by tau sub f. The decay time, basically what that is, is it's basically if you got an electron up here to this state right here where you could have fluorescence, basically assuming there's no fluorescence, how long would it take for that electron just to decay back down? Okay, that's all it's saying. Each of these quantum events, so if it's internal conversion, relaxation, absorption, phosphorescence, whatever, they're, they are all associated with some electronic transition. So for example, internal conversion is a conversion between the S2 state and the S1. Inner system crossing between S1 and T1. Um, we can even talk about fluorescence being between S1 and the ground state, typically given as S sub zero. So each one of these processes is given by some electronic transition. They all occur on a specific time scale. So for example, internal conversion happens in about 10 to the minus 14th to 10 to the minus 11 seconds. Absorption takes is very fast. It occurs within 10 to the minus 15 seconds. All right? um, you can see phosphorescence takes the longest. It's the slowest process approximately, 10 to the minus 4th to a tenth of a second. So phosphorescence is very, very uh, slow, whereas absorption is very fast. Okay. So you can see the time scale in all of these. We can also determine if it's a radiative process or not. For example, relaxations and internal conversions and inner system crossing, those are not radiative processes, whereas absorption, phosphorescence, and fluorescence are. Absorption is, is the absorbance, I guess you could say, of that light, whereas phosphorescence and fluorescence are emission. So therefore, these three are in some way radiative processes. Okay. And so basically the Jablonski diagram just diagrams all of these, okay? And then the time scale basically just gives you the time scale, the time over which that process is found to occur, okay? And all of these rate constants, these are really just assumed to be first order rate constants. So if you have a first order rate constant, they are in terms of per second, okay? They're per second. So you have the time scale here, which is in seconds. So actually, if you wanted to find approximately the rate constant for fluorescence, say, I'm saying it's probably going to occur around 10 to the minus 8th seconds, somewhere right in the middle here. Well, if it's occurring on the order of 10 to the minus 8th seconds, if I wanted to find the rate constant because it's first order, I would just take the reciprocal of 10 to the minus 8th, which would be 10 to the 8th, and that would be your rate constant of fluorescence. Now, there's going to be exact values of those. You can't just simply go right in the middle and take the reciprocal. But if you know the time scale of something happening, take its reciprocal, and that's the rate constant for that particular process um, in quantum kinetics. All right. So hopefully you learned a little bit of something from this video about quantum kinetics and Jablonski diagrams. In the next video, we're going to go over kinetics of quenching and talk about the Stern-Vollmer plot. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.